All right, so I noticed that one of my videos that's getting the most views is super old and really outdated. So it's this one, train PyTorch on and to predict a sequence of integers. So it's like my second, it's the one that's getting like the second to most views, which is not many actually, this is like one a day. But anyway, uh, I figured I should update it a little because that's so old. Why am I wearing headphones when I'm not using the headphones? Um, Okay, so I'm just going to start from scratch. And I I haven't watched that video. I mean, I kind of looked at it a little, so I remember vaguely what it's doing, but I haven't looked at it in detail. Um, so, uh, I don't know, let's make a folder foo. And then, uh, so let's make a script called, um, I don't know, predict integers R and N. And let's see if I <laughs> write something. Uh, okay, so um, all right. So what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to import torch, and we're going to have to uh, import things like the nn. And are we training it in this? Yeah, we are. So we're probably going to need things like optim. Um, yeah, those things. All right, and then presumably it's going to have to have some inputs, and so we're just going to have. Oh, it's probably literally a sequence of integers, right? So let's have we got twenty three, fifteen, uh, three, eleven, twelve, or something like that. So we've got. Well, we can, we can do more. All right, so we've got like seven integers, right? Um. And let's make this a list of lists. So basically you've got a list of examples and we only have one example and that example has like seven numbers. All right, we're gonna to have to create an RNN. So that's gonna be something like RNN dot RNN. Uh, all right, so basically what we're gonna to have to do um, is, so our inputs is discrete, right? Um, so it's just a bunch of numbers and we have to convert that into uh, some sort of embedding. And then the embedding goes through the RNN, and then we, which gives us uh, a new embedding. Uh, and then we have to convert that back into discrete. So to do this, we're gonna use an NN.embedding. Uh, the RNN is an NN.RNN. Um, and then to convert the embedding to discrete, we're just going to do uh, like an argmax, which is using the dot max. All right, so this is the steps we're going to do. Okay, so uh, we need this embedding. Uh, so uh, in order to create the embedding, we're going to need to know like what is our embedding size. So let's say embedding size equal, I don't know, like 32 or something. And then so embedding is nn dot embedding and we're going to go from right so basically we need to know how many possible integers there are right so uh, like let's say vocab size is 24 which is enough because our biggest number is 23 so basically these numbers have to be less than 24 so like 24 would be too the, if, if we had 24 here that would be too big so they have to be at least zero and no greater than 23 so here we're going to say vocab size and embedding size. So basically this is going to take as input our integers and it's going to convert that into each integer becomes a vector. Each vector has length 32 and it's just going to be a bunch of numbers. So now let's say our embedding size was like 4 then basically our input could be like say 15 and then the output would be like let's say I don't know like 0 0.2 and 0.571 and 0. Like basically, it all starts off as like random numbers, and then it will the embedding will be learned over time. So that the each of these each of these numbers will gradually map to a slightly different embedding, and then the embedding represents these numbers, but in a way that we can put these to an RNN because you can't you can't just give integers to an RNN. You have to first embed them into into vectors of reals, and then you can pass that through the RNN. All right, so we'll make our embedding size a bit 32. It makes it easier. It just gives the network a bit more flexibility. It means it can more easily. Uh, so what we're actually doing is we're overfitting on our training data here. Uh, so this is our training data. 
and we're going to overfit that. And so to overfit on that, we need like relatively higher embedding size. All right, so we've done this bit, the end embedding, and then the RNN is going to take embedding size and I suppose it can also output embedding size. And uh, let's just try that. All right, and then, all right, so we can forward the inputs through the embedding and print the x dot size and the x dot d type. Uh, so let's just do that first. Um, so I'm going to make the assumption that we've already got a Python. Uh, do I have a Python environment? I do, but does it have a uh, torch installed? Uh, no. All right, so let's create a Python environment. So I'm using pyenv. Uh, I've been using that for a while, I like it. So let's create a, a, a virtual environment called um, RNN integer. And we're going to create that off uh, version 3.8.5 of Python. Um, well, it didn't take that long. All right, then we're going to activate the RNN integer. Uh, I'm not. I'm going to source this and then activate it. All right, and then we're going to do um, pip install torch. Okay, so I needed to upgrade pip and then I can store uh, torch. So this is on a Mac. All right, so now we have um, now we have pip. Uh, sorry, now we have torch installed. All right, so then now we can do uh, we can run this. And so remember what we did is we created an embedding, we created a sequence of integers. And uh, we're going to, you know what, we probably have to convert our integers into a tensor, right? So here we've got inputs, we need to do torch.tensor. Uh, and we can print these inputs.size. And here we'll also do, uh, what type we'll, all right, so we're taking our inputs, which is, we're making it into a tensor. Uh, it's going to be a long tensor. I guess we can do the input.d type too, right? Uh, printing the size and the d-type, we're going to pass that through an embedding, and then we're going to print the the result, the size of the result coming out of that embedding. All right, so our inputs is a torch sort of size one seven, so that makes sense because we've got so we've got a batch size of one. This first number is the batch size. We've got a batch size of one, so a batch is like a group of examples that we can put through in a in a single uh, go. Uh, so here we've got a batch size of one, and then after passing through the embedding, uh, each of these numbers becomes embedded into thirty-two a vector of thirty-two integers. So we've got an we've got an extra dimension after putting it through the embedding. So the first dimension is the batch size. The second dimension is like which integer, and the third dimension is like we convert that integer. Each of those integers becomes a vector of floats. It becomes uh, an embedding. All right. So we got up to here, and then, so then we've got this R and M. Um, so let's put this sort of networky bit up here, and so we've got the inputs here. Pass it through the embedding. I guess we can put these comments up. Here, then the definitions up here. How's that look? Okay, all right. And then, so let's run the X through the RNN. I guess you know what there might be some option like. You know, why don't I just use Visual Studio like I always use? Uh, all right. Okay. So I've opened this in Visual Studio. Uh, so it's the same file as before, but just in Visual Studio. All right, so let's change our Python environment to RNN integer. That will get rid of the linter errors here. 
and then uh, so what was I wanting to know right so X is uh, we've got the batch size first right and I seem to remember well So it doesn't say, so let's just Google this because I, I seem to remember there's something about uh, batch size. So we go to pytorch.org and then we're going to go to docs somewhere. Is it just slash docs? It is. And then we're going to find the rnn doc. So that's going to be under torch.nn and um, it's a recurrent layer. And so here we've got nn.rnn. You know what? I'm not sure I don't use an LSTM actually. Should we use an LSTM? I think that's better. Let's use an LSTM. Uh, so basically, anywhere where you might be tempted to use an, an, an RNN, let's just use an LSTM. And so, uh, input size, hidden size, number of layers, yeah, batch first. All right, and this is false, right? So we need to make batch first true, which means that we put the batch size first and then like the index into the sequence of integers and then feature is like our embedding dimension. Can we get rid of this? Okay, great. Uh, all right, so here we're gonna do um, uh, batch size equal uh, batch first equal true is that right batch first equal true right and then we've got lots of other options right like we can increase the number of layers or whatever uh, okay all right so then we're going to pass our batch through the rnn um, and then we can again print the size and the detail uh, so let's do that so we're doing Python predict integers. You know what? Let's clear my screen a little. Python predict integers to RNN. Um, okay, so we've got tuple object has no attribute size. Right, so basically an LSTM returns two things. It returns like there's like H and C, right? Like let's go back to the LSTM. Uh, so the input is this input, you can also provide H and C, and the output is H and C. So the first is the hidden state, and the second is the self state. Uh, so let's do uh, H comma C, and um, we can print the sizes of each of those. So basically, as far as like converting this into an output, we'll probably take the C and convert that into an output. Um, but like they both contain a bunch of information you can you can train it to do both really um, uh, what do we do wrong so where do we go um, line 24 um, oh because the cell is also a tuple right so wait is it so, oh right, because we've got output H and C, all oh, right. So we're basically gonna use the output for our classification and then H and C, we can probably just ignore the H and C to be honest, we'll just use the output. So basically you would use the H and C if you were gonna do like a sequence to sequence. So if you take a bunch of integers, put it through an LSTM, you get some sort of state representing a thought vector, representing the integers, and then you can pass that through another, another STM which is going to generate things. So for example, for a translation system. But here we're just, uh, what are we doing? Oh, are we doing sec to sec? So basically, if we have a single LSTM like this, the input sequence and the output sequence have to be identical in length. Uh, if we have two LSTMs, one after the other, we can have one that takes in a sequence of one length, embeds it, and then so that's an encoder. And then we have another one which takes the the embedded sequence and decodes it, and it can be a different length. 
Um, and I feel that that second approach is more standard. What did I do in the first one? We're basically creating a decoder here. So we're doing a teacher forcing decoder. So we take some integers and for each integer we're going to predict the next integer in the sequence. That's what we're doing. So basically we've got some integer sequence uh, which is going to be let's say this and our input is going to be the integer sequence but without the last thing and then our output is going to be the integer sequence but miss it but skipping the first one so let's print that so we've got integer sequence I really hate that pop-up ah, anyway I'll turn it off later um, so we've got the integer sequence we've got the inputs and we've got the outputs you know what I'm going to turn that off okay does that help Maybe. All right, so basically here we've got the Okay, so we're printing the integer sequence the inputs is all, all of the numbers of the integer sequence except the last one and the outputs is all, all of the numbers in the integer sequence except for the first one basically for each um, For each of the numbers in the input we're going to have to predict the next number in the sequence so let's run that. Uh, all right, so well, yeah, anyway, so here's the integer sequence. We've got 23, 15, 3, etc., up to 14. The inputs is 23, 15. It's, it's all of those except for the 14. And the outputs is like all of those except for the first one, the 23. So based, based on the inputs, we're going to predict the outputs. We're going to give the inputs to the LSTM, and it has to predict the outputs. What this is is like um, if you're if you've got a decoder, uh, you're going to start off with something like a start of sequence token, and based on that it has to predict the first output, and then based on the next one it has to do. Then you're going to give that output as an input in order to predict this, and so on and so forth. So at each time step, it's taking the previous output and using it to predict the next one. But when you're training, you can do something which, t which is called teacher forcing, which you can just present all of these at once and like all of these all of these outputs at once. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, all right. So we embed the inputs, um, and then so let's say this is a target out uh, like gold outputs. I don't know why. All right, so gold outputs. So I didn't say that. All right, so we've got the inputs and the gold outputs. Uh, all right, so we pass these inputs through our RNN, and we get the output and the H and the C. Um, all right, what error are we getting? Expected tensor for argument one indices. Uh, all right, this is at line 27, right? So basically, this is because. Um, so our inputs, so we're going to call this input T, like tensor, right? And here we're going to say uh, torch.tensor, and then we're going to take the inputs, right? So basically, the inputs is a, is, a, is a single example, and then we're just going to make it have an. Just going to set, put that into a list which only contains that example, so we've got like a batch size of one. Uh, so then we should be able to embed that. Uh, okay, so line 26, line 26, inputs dot size. Yeah, so here we should put like input t.
And then uh, we're going to pass the input T into the embedding. And then that should all run. All right. So now we've got input T. Uh, it's a batch size of one. And there's six integers in that. We embed that. So now it's a batch size of one, six integers. And each one is um, embedded. The, the, each one is embedded into a vector of 32 floats. Uh, we pass that through an RNM, which gives us an output, which is also a batch size one, has six and um, embedded. Right now, these should basically be predicting these gold outputs. And what we're simulating here is like teacher forcing, where we give uh, some integers as the input, and it's got to predict the next number in the in the sequence. Uh, all right, and then we're basically going to throw away the H and let's see, we're going to ignore them. Right, so we've got the inputs passing through an embedding, through an RNN, we get an embedding, right? So then if we want to get the discrete output, then we need to do a dot max on it. So um, the predictions is basically we do the output dot max and dimension equal minus one. So dimension equal minus one means the last dimension. So the last dimension is um, like this embedding dimension. So if we take max over this, uh, it's not really an embedding actually, is it? Oh, sorry, this one here. It's, this isn't actually embedding, so let's not call this an embedding. Um, let's call this, uh, well, outputs, right? Um, all right, so we get the outputs and then we're going to pass that through a max. So basically, for each of the outputs, so it's a vector of 32 numbers, and the number, the dimension which has the largest number is the predicted value. So if we do a maximum, a max and argmax over these, a max over these 32, this vector of 32, we find the number which is the largest, and that the index of that number is then the output. So we do the dot and max, it gives us the indices of of each of these. So, mm, so let's say we had, let's say this was only four. So let's say the output was say 0 0.1, 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.01, uh, and minus 0 0.2 or something like that. So here we've got four numbers. Which one's the largest? This one. And the index of this is, is one, like this is zero, this is one. So then if we did a max over this, then the result would be one. And so if we have 32 numbers instead of four, then we simply are gonna have 32 here, but we still do the same thing. We find the largest number and we find the index into that. So we're gonna do the dot max over this. The output, the result of doing the dot max will be a tensor with an integer tensor, a batch size of one, and six numbers, and it will be discrete numbers this time instead of floats. Like we can print these outputs, and it's just um, floats, right? So like, let's get rid of this for now. If we do print output, it's going to be like an absolute ton of floats, right? Lots and lots of floats, weird numbers. Uh, so we're not going to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do preds equal output dot max dim equal minus one. So this is going to take the maximum over the last dimension. So the last dimension is, um, oops, let's just save this. The last dimension in the outputs is this one. Uh, so we're going to take the max over that, find the index of the largest value for each of these. And uh, so the result is going to be an integer tensor, bat size one and, and six. So let's look at, oh, so what what's happening here? So basically, the max returns two tensors. The first tensor is the actual maximum value, and the second tensor is the index of the maximum value. And what we want is the index of each maximum value. So for each of the, for each of these outputs, we want the index of the largest number in this. Uh, so if we print the size of this now. Uh, it should be it should be one six. All right, so it's one six. 
Right, and then if we print that, it should just be integers. Okay, right, so it's just integers, right? But like, this is our inputs. This is the desired outputs, and this is our current outputs, right? So basically the network is producing a bunch of numbers, but it's not the numbers that we want. And so we're gonna to have to train this network. Uh, all right, so let's get rid of a bunch of these print statements. So we've got integer sequence input. Well, so let's have integer inputs, gold outputs, and preds. All right, so here's the inputs. Uh, here's the gold output. So this is what we actually want to get, and this is what we're getting currently. Uh, so basically, we need to train the network in order to uh, take these inputs and give these outputs. All right, so let's look into doing that. So in order to train this network, we're basically going to run the inputs through many times, and each time we're going to get a loss, and then we're going to back prop that loss. Uh, Okay, so the inputs are not changing each time. The embedding will change each time and the output. So this bit we're going to need to loop. So let's say for uh, epoch, I don't know, epoch in range like a thousand, let's say. Uh, I'm going to do that. Uh, so if we do that, it's just going to like run a thousand times. And it's going to give the same output every time because we haven't actually trained at all yet. So now we need to do a loss. Uh, so we don't do a loss on the preds, we do a loss on the output. And in order to do the loss, um, we can probably use a functional cross entropy. Uh, so we're going to do input torch.nn.functional as f. And. Um, Yeah, that should be fine. Oh, you know what? At the moment, the output is embedding size, but we need to make it. We need to make it um, vocab size. So what we need is we need to have like a linear layer. Let's call it. I don't know embedding to vocab. Let's say, and it's a linear layer, and basically the input size is embedding size and the output size is uh, vocab size. All right, so this is going to take in, um, and we should do this before the max, actually. So we take the output of the LSTM, we pass it to the linear, so it's going to be like 1632, and then after going through the linear, it's going to be like 16, like 24, like what our vocab size is up here, right? All right. So let's pass through the ETV. So we're going to take. Uh, yeah, so I guess this kind of is an embedding, actually, in a sense. So let's call this M out. And so then we've got outputs equal ETV M out. And um, right, like this. So let's print the m out dot size and let's print the output dot size. Uh, let's get rid of this loop for now. I mean, we should do it in range one. And yeah, all right. And then just modify this bit here. So we've got. Um, then this is going to go through a linear layer. Oh, yeah, we'll just call this ETV, right? Uh, all right, so we take we take our discrete integers, we pass it through an embedding layer that, that makes them each embedded into like vectors of floats, pass that through the LSTM, um, which outputs more vectors of floats we pass it through this linear layer which basically changes the dimension from being embedding size to being vocabulary size and then we can take a max over that um, in order to get the the actual discrete predictions all right 
So let's try running that. Okay, so here's the inputs, here's the intended outputs. The embedding out is bat size of one, uh, sequence length of six, and the embedding size is like there's 32 dimensions for each of those. So that this is the embedding size. Then after we pass it through the E2V linear, we've changed from 32 to 24. So this is the vocabulary size. And then when we do the dot max on that, then we get the, the tokens. Okay, all right. Uh, so then let's change that to for epoch image. Let's say 100. Uh, let's get rid of these prints. And then we want to form a loss. So to form the loss, we're going to do f dot cross entropy. And so the cross entropy, so this f, this, we were using a functional, basically these things are stateless, you just give it all of the tensors it needs and it's going to calculate it. For the cross entropy, because the cross entropy doesn't contain any learned parameters, so functional is fine. Um, and then the first value here is the outputs, and the second value is the discrete gold ground truth, so that's gold outputs. But this should probably have to be uh, a torch.tensor. Probably like that. Uh, so let's print our loss. So this percent four f, it just it says basically like this is a float. That's the f, and we want to print it with four decimal places. Otherwise, it just prints like really long things. And let's just make this for up to ten for now. Um, batch size to match target batch size cross entropy. Right, so basically our gold outputs, we just it's just a single example. Uh, so we basically need to make it a list of examples containing a single example. And that's probably going to solve the error. Uh, it's not. Uh, okay, line 34, cross entropy, outputs. What's the error? Uh, expected target size 124, got 16. So, oh, right, because cross entropy loss uh, expects a two dimensional input, I believe. Uh, so, we're going to have to hack around with some views. So, let's just like, have a look at this. Um, if we go back here, um, we don't want torch.nn, we want functional. And let's search for cross entropy. Cross entropy. This criterion computes the cross entropy loss between input and target. And see the input. Basically, the the dimension for the vocab has to be the second dimension, not like currently like the dimension over the number of classes which is the number of tokens the vocab size currently we've got it as the last dimension but the cross entropy is expecting it to be the so if you've only got two dimensions it can be the last dimension but if you have more than one dimension it has to be the second dimension so it, it should always be the second dimension basically uh so we've got a couple of options um i guess we can just like transpose yeah no, i don't like transposing so what i would normally do i'll flatten it out so we'll do outputs flat equal outputs dot view uh, so let's think this through so we've got batch size sec len and then uh vocab size and what we want to do is to flatten this out to be batch size times sec len uh, and then vocab size and that's for the outputs. Like we want to resize it like this. And then for the gold, the gold is um, batch size sec len. And we need to flatten that out to be batch size times sec len. We still didn't get rid of those um, suggestions in Visual Studio Code. All right, so we're going to flatten the the first two dimensions out. Um, so let's get those dimensions. Just, should we actually make some variables for these things? 
So we're going to say batch size equal one, and um, and we can get sec len from here, right? Sec len equal len uh, len gold outputs. All right. So we've got batch size equal one, and um, sec len equals the length of the gold outputs. Uh, all right. So then. Right, so the output's flat is the output. So dot view, we can basically, we take exactly the same numbers in memory and we're just gonna like reimagine that they're, they're in a different dimension, they represent different dimensions. But basically we can flatten it out by doing outputs dot view, batch size times sec len, and then vocab size. So basically this says, the first dimension is now of size batch len, batch size times sec len. And then we have another dimension, which is size vocab size. Whereas initially, the outputs are this. And then after the dot view, they become like this. And we can do the same thing for the uh, gold, gold outputs flat equal. So let's take this torch.tensor. And we're going to do dot view. And uh, we're just going to do, I mean, we could do simpler than that, really, but because we just got this one sequence. So, but anyway, let's just do it like this. Uh, so we're gonna do dot view batch size times sec len. Uh, we could even actually just do minus one and that will work. Actually, we could do minus one here, to be honest. We could do, but let's just do it like this because uh, I prefer to put it explicitly because if there's any errors anywhere, if you put minus one, it often swallows the error. So you basically get an error later on and you don't know why. Whereas if you actually explicitly put these sizes, uh, if somehow it's not the right size, uh, it won't get swallowed. It will give you an error now rather than later, which I find much better for debugging. So let's explicitly put the actual explicit sizes here. So now for the cross entry, we're going to give the flat outputs and the flat gold outputs. Right. So that will hopefully run. All right. So we've got a loss now, but the loss isn't going down. It's not going down because we're not training, we're not doing any bat prop. So to do bat prop, we're gonna to need to create an optimizer. And um, we'll just use Adam because it's always, it's usually always the strongest. So we're gonna do opt equal optim dot Adam. And then we need to put a learning rate. So let's say, I don't know, like 0 0.01 or something, 0 0.01. And then, um, well, let's try 0 0.02. And then we need to have some params. Maybe we can just make a list. So for these parameters, I guess we're going to have to do something like, so we've got embedding dot parameters and RNN dot parameters and uh, RNN and uh, E2V dot parameters. Is that going to work? Oh, uh, it's not going to work because these are all generators, right? I don't think that will work. Optimizer can only optimize tensors, but one of the params is parameters. I think we have to like add these together. Uh, but these are generators. So, yeah, they're generators. So we need to convert them into lists probably. So we can convert a generator into a list by simply making the generator as a, a parameter to the constructor of a list. So this will make them all into lists and try add them together. All right, so we created an optimizer. And then what we're going to have to do is opt dot, hopefully this zero grab works. Then we're going to do loss dot backward and then opt dot step. So this first thing sets all the gradients to zero in all of those. So each of these tensors can store gradients. They're kind of like got this parallel structure where a tensor stores the actual values 
and they've also got like this parallel tensor inside them which can store the gradient so you can back prop onto the network modules so onto the embedding layer and we're back propagating onto the LSTM layer and we're back propagating onto the ETV layer now each of those layers contains weights like parameters tensors um, and each of those sets of parameters slash weights has like a parallel tensor associated with which, which is the, the gradient and when we do the loss dot backward it's going to fill in those gradients uh, with the gradients coming back from our loss so we take our loss we back propagate the gradients through the network and that's going to populate all of these gradient these like parallel gradient tensors um, and then when we do the opt out step it's going to apply those gradients to those weights and update the weights before we do the backward where we back propagate the loss onto these gradient vector, vector tensors uh, we need to zero grad which sets all of these gradient tensors to be zero um, because otherwise it won't otherwise it'll just add when you do the backward it will add the it will add the back propagated gradients onto the existing gradient tensors which we don't want we want to first zero them out and then the, then the gradients will be replaced well it's added to the zero so yeah and then when we do the opt dot step the all of the network parameters are going to take a little step so that the output the next time will be a bit closer to what we want if we give it the same input all right so the result of doing the zero grad the, the loss dot backward on the opt dot step should be that the next time that we go through this loop and we take these inputs embed them pass them through the rnn pass them through the etv and calculate the loss the loss should go down it should be less so if we do that many times the loss should keep going down so let's try that let's run that all right so the loss starts at being 3.2 and then it's 2.8 so it's gone down 2.4 it's gone down now it's 0.25 so each time it's going down and it's gone down from 3.2 to 0.26 so that's working and then look here's the predictions uh, we wanted them to be 15, 3, 11, 12, 19, 14 initially they were 1, 1, 1, 1, 6 and then actually in like oh, literally one step well after one training step they now match what we wanted them to be alright so we've already achieved our goal of training a network to predict a sequence of integers um, so um, took a while for me to remember what I did before and I'm not sure if this is exactly what I did before but it, this is using what version of torture we were using we are using we're using 1.12 which I think is new uh, that's interesting um, yeah, so we no longer have like autograd dot variables. Uh, so what we did is we created an integer sequence, and then we're going to imagine we're creating like a decoder uh, LSTM where we take in uh, each integer is going to predict the next integer in that sequence. So we've got the the inputs is the first integers, and the outputs is like these ones without we're missing the first one so 23 is going to predict 15 15 is going to predict 3 3 is going to predict 11 11 is going to predict 12 etc 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 um, we embedded those using an embedding layer so that converts each of these discrete integers into a vector of floats uh, we passed those through the RNN so the RNN is the the main thing that's going to do the work of predicting sequences that's what RNNs do um, we take the output which has uh, like an embedding dimension of 32 and then we use the E2V linear layer uh, to convert that from being like embedding size to being vocab size and our vocab here is like 24 if we were doing like English and we had like 26 possible letters then our vocab size would be 26 or if we we're doing words we might have like tens of thousands of words I don't know um, okay and then by doing a dot max on that we can print out we can convert those vectors over vocab size into like discrete integers which we print and then to learn we're going to create an optimizer here we're using the atom optimizer we have to give it a learning rate which is how fast we want to learn if it's too fast it will kind of oscillate and 
end up flying out to infinity. So, it, but if it's too slow, too small, it will be too slow. So we want some some number in the middle. So 0 0.02 seems to be a good guess, apparently. Uh, we have to pass in all the parameters that we want to train into that. So here we're training the embedding, we're training the RNN, and we're training the ETV. So dot parameters, because these are generators, so we converted them into a list by wrapping them in list. Um, and then having got that optimizer, each time we're going to do multiple steps around each t each step, each epoch. We pass in the inputs, and then we get the outputs, and we get the loss. Um, so the loss, we're using a cross-entry loss, because basically this is a classification task for each of the outputs. Did it predict the right token, the right, the right number? Uh, so that's a cross-entry loss. It's a classification loss. Uh, and then given that loss, so we're going to take the optimizer, we're going to zero grab, which zeroes the gradients of all our parameters. Uh, then we bat propagate the loss, which creates gradients, bat propagates gradients. And the gradients is like, what do we need to change in these weights in order to get do better next time? And then the op dot step is, is like, it actually changes the weights, it updates the steps, it updates the weights. And then we do that like 10 times, and actually after like one step, it's already predicting the right sequence. Uh, so there we go. And I guess I put this into the description, I guess, this program, I'm not sure. But yeah, um, thanks for watching. I don't know if this is better or worse than the old one, but at least it's using like Torch 1.12. So there's no longer like autograd.variables and stuff. So yeah, thanks. <laughs>